Good morning. Let's open our services this morning. Uh, we'll stand and sing hymn number 272. 272, the solid rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. veils his lovely face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground Oath, his covenant, his blood, support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Be seated. Good morning. <clears throat> We're going to be looking at a verse of scripture in Colossians chapter 2, if you'd like to open your Bibles with me there, Colossians chapter 2. <clears throat> As we were singing that hymn, I was thinking about what the Lord told the disciples when he said, upon this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not be able to prevail against it. What a solid rock we have. <clears throat> the stone that has been rejected by the builders, God has made to be the head of the corner. And uh, his whole church rests on him. <clears throat> um, Zobi Torres and Mary, Ma some of you may not know that Mary is Zobi's mother and uh, Mary Hernandez. Uh, Mary's son, Zobi's brother, uh, Tony, lived with Hugo and Zobi and Mary, and uh, he passed away yesterday. So, um, had been battling cancer for, for some time. So, I want to pray for Mary and Zobi and the family uh, this morning. Let's, let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father. We're very thankful that we can come into thy presence and seek your mercy and for your grace and your help in our time of need. We're thankful for the comfort that you give to the hearts of your children. Lord, uh, no 
no words or efforts that we make can comfort the grieving heart of a, of a mother or a sister. Lord, we know that only you can speak that peace, and Lord, we pray that you would. Pray that you would continue to keep Zobie and Mary and Max and Hugo and the rest of the family as they grieve the loss of their brother and their son. Lord, we ask that you would just enable them to find their rest and their hope, their joy and all their salvation in Christ thy Son. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity once again that you've given us to gather together and to open your word and to seek your face. Lord, you said to, to seek you and that we would find you. And so, Lord, we, we trust your, your faithfulness to your promises. And we ask that you would work in us to cause us to to come unto thee and to seek thee in thy word. And Lord, bless your word by your spirit and bless our hearts and reveal to us the glory of thy dear son. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Wednesday night, we looked at verse 6 in Colossians chapter 2. And just very briefly, I'll give you the points of that message. Uh, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Uh, the walk of faith is a continuation of the initial experience of, of the new birth. Uh, we're not looking for something different. We're looking to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Christ. And so as we received Christ Jesus the Lord, so we walk in him. How does, how does a person receive Christ? They receive him, first of all, as a sinner. And, uh, and sin never goes away. It continues to be the, the thing that, that grieves our soul and that drives us to Christ for our salvation. Uh, sin in so many ways only gets worse as we, as we see more and more of it in our, in our hearts and in our lives. And so as you receive Christ Jesus, the Lord so walk ye in him. We received him in love. That only grows deeper. Uh, we received him as the Christ, the Messiah. <laughs> we see more and more of his successful work as the anointed one. Uh, we, we receive him as the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who successfully accomplished the salvation of his people. We receive him by grace. We still walk by grace. We receive him through faith. We still walk by faith. <laughs> you see, these things don't change. We, we are continuing along the same road that the Lord put us on when he saved us. The Lord Jesus Christ being the way. And so as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. That's such a comfort. Um, notice in verse 7, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Well, the Lord is telling us something about this walk of faith. Uh, when he tells us that first we are rooted in him. Um, when a seed germinates, it shoots out roots before it shoots out a stem. It has to draw its nourishment from the earth. And, uh, and so when the scripture speaks of being rooted in Christ, he's talking about the, 
the foundation, the, the cause, the origin of our salvation being in Christ. Uh, Job put it like this. He said, the root of the matter is in me. <laughs> and so the Lord is likening the Lord Jesus Christ to this, to this root. Um, you remember John the Baptist came and said, the ax has been laid to the root of the tree. Uh, speaking of Israel, rejecting Christ as the Messiah and, um, and the Lord warns them that he's laid the ax to the root of the tree and he's going to cut down that tree. But out of that stump is going to come the stem of Jesse. Out of that root, as a root out of dry ground, as a tender shoot. So the Lord Jesus Christ is, is, that, is, is the root of the plant. He is the root of the matter. He is the root of the tree. And uh, in Romans chapter 11, the scripture speaks of that olive tree being Israel and the Gentiles being the wild olive that has been grafted in to the root of that tree. And he says, he goes on to say this in Romans chapter 11, he says, he says, the tree doesn't sustain the root, the root sustains the tree. <laughs> and uh, how important the root system is to the health of a tree. And so when the Lord says you are rooted in him, uh, he's talking about the, the very source of life that a root gives to a tree and that Christ gives to us. Um, <clears throat> in, Psalm verse, in Psalm 80 verse 9, the Lord speaking of Israel, he says, I caused it to take deep root and it filled the earth. <laughs> uh, that's, what we, that's what we hope. As we, as we walk in the same manner in which we were saved. As you receive Christ Jesus the Lord. So walk ye in him. That the roots will only grow deeper. Um, it's the trees that have shallow roots. That are easily blown over in a storm. It's the... It's the, you remember the parable of the four soils that the Lord gave? Sometimes it's called the parable of the sower, the parable of the seed, uh, where the, soil, the seeds are scattered. That's the seed of the gospel. That's what we're doing right now. We're scattering the seed. And some of the seed, the Lord said, falls on rocky ground. Now, what he's describing there is those those boulders that have a thin layer of moss on them. And uh, that moss is very, is very fertile. Um, and when the seed falls in that moss, it immediately germinates and springs forth and shows life. And then he said, but when the heat of the sun arises, uh, the plant withers away because there's no root to it. There's no root to it. Um, so we are rooted in Christ. Um, and, uh, if the, if, if there's no root, uh, the plant will not survive, uh, the times of, of heat, the times of drought, the times of storms, the times of trials, the times of difficulties, uh, the trees that survive are the ones that have deep roots. Um, Isaiah chapter 37, verse 31. We looked at this verse Wednesday night. The same verse, Isaiah prophesied during the reign of four kings in Israel. And one of them was a king by the name of Hezekiah. And this exact same verse is found in 2 Kings chapter 18. But if you'd like to turn to me to Isaiah 37, verse 31. Isaiah 37, verse 31. And uh, the remnant. That's the church. You understand that. That's the, that's the few that are rooted in Christ. The remnant that is escaped 
from the house of Judah. <laughs> uh, Jeff Taubenheimer were talking about this verse the other day, and he said, that's what we are, escapees, escapees. And that, you know, it, what, a, what a picture of a child of God escaping, uh, escaping judgment, escaping wrath, escaping uh, the, the penalty of sin. And um, What does he say about this remnant that has escaped out of the house of Judah? They shall take root downward. And they shall bear fruit upward. Uh, that's, that's such an important part. If, if for the tree to be able to bear fruit, it has to have deep roots. Uh, we planted some trees recently in our yard, and I tried something I've never done before. I saw it on YouTube, and I thought, well, that sounds reasonable. So I dug the hole much deeper than I needed to, and I put some gravel in the bottom of the hole, and I took a two-inch piece of PVC pipe and rested it on the gravel and ran it all the way out of the ground, and then filled the hole up with dirt and put the plant, put the tree uh, in the top of the hole. And now we're watering those trees through the PVC pipe uh, in hopes that those roots will sense that water underneath of them and grow down deep. <laughs> And it makes sense to me. I mean, I don't, I don't know what the results are going to be yet, but um, it's supposed to accelerate the, the initial growth of the tree and make it much more healthy. It, it's, it's it. <laughs> Watering the roots. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> Proverbs says the root, the root of the righteous shall not be moved. What great hope we have. Rooted in him. Uh, the root of the righteous shall not be moved. Um, if, a, if a person can fall away, they will fall away. And those who have the root of the matter in them, like Job, though Job experienced great, great trials, uh, the fact that the root of the matter was in him uh, kept him. The root shall not be moved. The root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. <clears throat> that passage I was just uh, quoting in Romans chapter 11, speaking of Israel as that olive tree and the Gentiles as being grafted into the olive tree and that the the, the, the root sustains the tree, not the tree, the root. Uh, goes on to say, if the root be holy, <laughs> so are the branches. Here's our, there's our hope. If the root of the matter is in us, if the water of God's word has, has caused life to spring in our hearts and, the, and, and we've been rooted in Christ, it shall not be moved. It will bear fruit. And if the root is holy, then the branches are holy. Go back with me to our text. Rooted. That's the cause. That's the foundation. That's the source of life, if you will. And built up. <laughs> so... That which is firmly rooted will grow and it will be built up. Um, and uh, what, a, what a wonderful picture of the church when the Lord asked the disciples, whom do men say that I am? And Peter said, well, uh, the, one of the disciples said, well, some say that thou art John the Baptist or Elijah, one of the prophets. So who do you say that I am? And Peter spoke up in one of those rare times where he actually had something good to say. Uh, Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Uh, we know and are sure of that. And uh, remember what the Lord said, blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my father which is in heaven has revealed it to you. And upon this rock, speaking of the confession that Peter had just made that Jesus was the Christ, 
the foundation stone. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then later when he spoke to Peter, he said, he, he said, he said, Simon, you shall be called Peter. Now, you know, the name Peter uh, translated means rock. But here's the difference. Here's the difference. When the Lord Jesus Christ said upon this rock, the word there is Petra. And it's a large foundation stone. And when the Lord called Peter a rock, he called him Petros, which is a small pebble. And, uh, and there's, the, there's the building up of the church. That the Lord builds his church upon that large Petra that large foundation stone and you and I are but pebbles being built together. Uh, let me show you that in the scriptures. Turn with me to first Peter chapter two, first Peter chapter two. <clears throat> we'll begin reading in verse, in verse one. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Oh, a baby craves, that's the word desire there, craves the milk. And as that baby feeds on the mother's milk it grows and so the lord says as newborn babes crave after the word the milk of god's word that you might grow thereby if so be that you have tasted that the lord is gracious <laughs> if the root of the matter be in you uh, if this is your life if christ is your life uh, then you're going to want more of him as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord. So walk ye in him. To whom coming? We continually come. You see, nothing's changed. There was a time when we may have run to and fro throughout the earth, seeking after God and not finding him. And, uh, you know, we're... We, we were looking at fruit trees Wednesday night, and I thought afterwards, I thought, you know, we were, we were like a person in a grocery store. We'd walk down one aisle and look at this fruit, and, and then we'd go down another aisle and pick up a couple pieces of that fruit, and, and always looking for just the right thing. And now that our hearts are rooted in Christ, we're not interested in any other fruit. We're not, we're not looking for anything else. We're just looking for more of him. <laughs> and, and so he says here, you, to whom coming? You keep coming to the same one that you came to when you, were, when you were converted. As you receive Christ Jesus the Lord as a sinner, in love, by grace, through faith, as the Christ. <laughs> uh, so walk ye in him. Look at... Uh, <clears throat> to whom coming as unto a living stone. This, this foundation stone upon which the church is built is alive. <laughs> yeah, it's not a dead stone. It's not a cold stone. It's a living stone. That's contrary to nature, but so is the gospel, isn't it? The gospel is contrary to nature. <clears throat> As a living stone disallowed, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. And that word precious means without price. He is the, he is the pearl of great price. Ye also, <clears throat> as lively stones, <clears throat> and the word translated lively in verse is exactly the same word translated living in verse 4. Don't know why they did that. Always thought, what is a lively stone? But it's a living stone. 
And so just as the foundation stone is alive, so these petrosses, the little stones that are being built upon the petra, are alive. They're alive. Why? Because the root of the matter is in them. We've been, we, we've been rooted in Christ, and that's where the life of the tree comes from. It is the root that sustains the branches. And if the root be holy, the branch be holy. And so, if this is the case, then we continue to come to him as living stones... We are built up. You see this? This is what, this is what he's telling us in, in, verse 11, in verse 7 of Colossians chapter 2. Being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scriptures. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. There's the Petra again. There's the foundation stone upon which the church is built. Elect. God chose Christ. Behold, mine elect. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 42. Precious. Priceless. He that believeth on him should not be confounded. In other words, he's not going to be confused. He's not going to be uh, running to and fro looking for something else. He has, he has discovered <laughs> by God's grace. He has, has had revealed to him the glorious person of Christ. And he now has his life. So just as that stone is alive, we are alive. Being built up by God into a holy priesthood. A spiritual, spiritual house. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, unbelieving, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same as made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto they were also appointed. Men by nature hate Christ. Men by nature have, have no interest in a God who sovereignly saves them. <laughs> uh, they want a God that they can control, a God that they can contribute to. And, uh, and the gods of religion are just that. But to you which believe, to you which trust Christ... To you which had the root of the matter in you. Uh, he's precious. And you just want to keep coming to him. <laughs> You're not interested in going anywhere else. Just keep coming to him. Alright, let's go back to our text. So here's how we, here's how we walk in the one. That we, we walk in him in the same manner in which we were saved. As you received him, so walk ye in him. Rooted. There's our source of life, built up as a, as a living spiritual house. <clears throat> Notice the rest of verse, established, established in the faith. Now men talk about uh, the Islam faith or the Jewish faith or the Hindu faith. When God speaks of faith, he says it's the faith. <laughs> the faith. Let men have faith in what they have faith in. I want to know what God says about the faith. The faith is being used in the same manner as the gospel. And it's what the Lord said in Ephesians when he said there is one faith. One faith. He said there's one body, there's one spirit, there's one hope, there's one Lord, there's one faith, there's one baptism, there's one God and Father of us all. To God there is but one. <laughs> one. The simplicity of Christ is called the faith. The faith. That's, 
That's what, I, that's what I'm interested in. What does God call the faith? Acts chapter 6, a great company of priests were obedient to the faith. Acts chapter 14, in Antioch, when the apostles were in Antioch, they confirmed the souls of the disciples and exhorted them to continue in the faith. In the faith. There's only one faith. We don't, you know, men waste their time studying world religions and trying to figure out a way to, uh, to, to defeat them or to, to argue the gospel against them. That's a waste of time. There are, there's, a, there's so many man-made faiths. Here the Lord speaks of the faith. Established in the faith. Established, strengthened, confirmed, made sure, confident, certain. <laughs> you see, if the root of the matter is in you and, uh, and you're being built up in Christ, then uh, the more that building is built and the bigger that tree gets, the more firm it is, the more resilient it is, the more sure it is. And that's how... One of the evidences of salvation is that you're more convinced of the faith now than you were before. <laughs> and, and you'll be more convinced and more sure that who you believe is, is the Lord and, and what you believe is the faith and the gospel in the future than you are now. That's what it is to grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't become less sure. You don't become more worried that, you know, maybe, maybe there's something else. Established. <laughs> That's what this word established means. Um, in Acts chapter 16, the churches were established and in the faith and increased in number daily. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, stand fast in the faith. Stand fast in the faith. Uh, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. <laughs> Be not. You know, don't. don't, don't what is this faith? It is the faith, Galatians chapter 2, it is the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. So our faith is in his faithfulness, and we are more sure now of his faithfulness than we've ever been before. And if the Lord's pleased to cause those roots to go deeper, he's pleased to water them and... Uh, to build us up in Christ, keep coming to Christ, we'll become more and more and more sure in the one moment of truth when we will be most sure that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that he is all our hope in salvation. Is that moment of truth that will come for each and every one of us when we pass from this life into the next and draw a final breath and we'll know more sure then Christ is all we have. It's all we have. What a sure hope. <laughs> what an anchor for the soul. <sighs> God only gives one kind of faith. Complete trust in his son. It's the only kind of faith that God gives. Jesus Christ is all of my righteousness before God. Jesus Christ is all the hope of my justification before God. He is all my wisdom. He is all my sanctification. I'm not adding any of my works to what he has accomplished. He's my holy. If the root is holy, then the branch is holy. <laughs> there he is. That's the faith that God gives. When God gives faith, what must we do to inherit eternal life? 
What, what, can we, what work can we work that we might work the works of God? Isn't that what a man said? This is the work of God that you believe on his son whom he has sent. Rest all the hope of your immortal soul on his glorious person and on his accomplished work. Believe that you have no righteousness outside of him. You have no hope of your sins being forgiven apart from his shed blood. You have no hope of standing before a holy God, holy, except to be found in him. The only hope of your redemption, the only hope of your wisdom, Christ is all. And here's the glorious truth. All God's people believe that. They do. Every one of them. Scripture says that the prophets of God all see eye to eye. They all declare the same gospel message. It is called the faith. The faith. The unity that God gives to his people in Christ makes them consider any other differences that they might have to be insignificant. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. These things don't matter. How many people are there that you know that believe on Christ? <laughs> that have the root of the matter in them. That are being built up and established in the gospel. It's a rare thing, isn't it? It's a precious thing. As you notice back in our text quickly, as you have been taught, now God uses the voice of a man to, uh, to do what we're doing right now, and that is just to give explanation, if you will, and comparison to the Word of God. We're not giving you our opinion. We're telling you what God says, and so that audible voice is the means by which the Lord uh, teaches his people but the audible voice left to itself is not sufficient it's not sufficient uh, if all we hear is what the is what the ear can hear and all we understand is what the mind can understand then we've not been taught of God but if God uses the voice of a man to confirm his word to our hearts then we can say they shall be all taught of God. Paul said, I didn't learn this gospel from a man. <laughs> I learned it direct. The revelation of Jesus Christ was made unto me. And so it is when the gospel is heard, we don't glorify a man for having taught us. Uh, the Lord taught me. The Lord revealed himself. Paul went on to say, Though we or an angel from heaven preach unto you any other gospel than the one that we have preached unto you, let him go to hell. That's, that's God's word. Let him be accursed. Let him be under the wrath and judgment of God for all eternity. If any other gospel is preached than the one that we have preached, this is both, we've been taught of God. As you have been taught. As you have been taught. God teaches you. Nobody can unteach you. Isn't that glorious? <laughs> and, if, and if all. If everybody I know. Turns against the gospel. If I've been taught of God. I. Can't turn away. Notice the last part of this verse. Here's how we walk in Christ, rooted, built up in him, established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. <clears throat> oh, child of God, I know that there are trials and troubles and disappointments that cause sadness and sometimes our flesh responds in ways that it ought not. But all that having been said, who has reason to be thankful like we do? Thankful. 
thankful that God would choose us. Thankful that Christ would die for us. Thankful that the Lord would would send his spirit to open the eyes of our understanding and regenerate us. No people on the face of the earth ought to be as grateful and thankful as the people of God. Be ye thankful in all things, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Oh, we ought to be. We have reason to be, don't we? We have reason to be thankful. We're thankful for that which we deserve not. Lord, you could have left me to myself. You know, someone, someone said, you know, all the immorality of the world is God's judgment. Uh, no, here's what they said. That God is going to judge the world because of the immorality of the world. No. The immorality of the world is God's judgment. It is God's judgment. If God left any of us to ourselves, that's where we would be. Approving of and celebrating all the things that the world approves and celebrates. All God has to do to judge us is leave us alone. Leave us to ourselves. That's all he has to do. And there, are, there, there is no end to what we would you see, sin is self-destructive. It's self-destructive. And we are self-destructive. And all the Lord has to do is leave us to ourselves and we will destroy ourselves. So the judgment of God is not going to come because of immorality. The, the wicked things that men do is the judgment of God. Because he has left them to themselves. Lord, don't leave me to myself. Now what the Lord said in the model prayer. He said, when you pray, pray like this. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. That's the proper interpretation. Deliver me from the devil. Deliver me from Satan. Lord, don't let him reign in my life. Keep me, protect me, guard me. And he does. And so... We're thankful, thankful that the Lord has not turned us over to ourselves, our own devices, our own opinions, our own views of God, our own understanding of ourselves, our own understanding of the world. God's people have so many reasons to be thankful all that they have from him is by his grace. Amen. How do we walk? Same way we came to begin with. Rooted. Built up in him. Established in the faith. As you've been taught. Abounding. Now that means me. That means just as we're more convinced that the gospel is true today than we were yesterday, we ought to be more thankful today than we were yesterday and tomorrow be more thankful than we were today. Abounding, abounding in thanksgiving. Amen? All right. Let's take a break.